Hey guys, Corey here with another concept video. Today it's all about different techniques used in genetic manipulation. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started. Now before we get into our next process, DNA profiling, I will first need to introduce some important new molecules which will make this process possible. They are DNA probes and restriction enzymes. Now DNA probes, similar to primers, are man-made single-stranded pieces of DNA. However, in this case, they are complementary to a specific gene of interest and they are radioactive or fluorescent. Their job is to seek out genes of interest and because they are fluorescent, when they do their job, they can easily be found. This allows scientists to locate particular genes, even in large samples of DNA. Now the second of our new molecules are restriction enzymes. These enzymes have the amazing ability to cut DNA in very specific places. And when they do, they do not leave a clean cut. They actually produce things called sticky ends, resulting in exposed bases at either end of the cut. Now as with all proteins, restriction enzymes are very specific, so there are many different types of restriction enzymes, all of which make cuts in different places on DNA. Now back to our process. DNA profiling is a process used to identify suspects in crime cases and fathers in paternity tests. The result of this process will be what we call a DNA fragment or a unique picture of someone's DNA. This unique picture is specific for each person and can therefore be used for identification. The process, as with PCR, is relatively simple and can be explained in a few steps. First, the sample is collected from the crime scene and amplified using PCR. Once this has occurred, many restriction enzymes are added and used to cut the DNA into many different pieces. These pieces of DNA are known as DNA fragments. The DNA fragments are then collected and placed into a machine and undergo the process of gel electrophoresis. This process basically separates the strands and sorts them into sizes. This is possible because of two properties of DNA, the fact that they are negatively charged and because they're all different sizes. The machine has a current flowing through it and consists of a gel medium. So when it is turned on and a sample of DNA is placed in it, the fragments will repel from the negative end and move towards the positive end. And because the fragments are moving through a gel, the smaller fragments are able to move faster and therefore further in a given amount of time. The result of this is fragments of DNA separated into sizes. Now this is not our final fingerprint however, as most people's DNA if left in this state would look the same. To locate specific genes and therefore create a unique fingerprint, DNA probes of known base sequence are added and allowed to locate their particular gene of interest. The whole sample is then transferred to a nylon cloth and x-rayed. The result of this final product is a DNA fingerprint, a unique picture of someone's DNA and can now be used for identification in a wide range of applications. Now the last of our processes is called DNA sequencing. This process involves techniques that are used to determine the actual sequence of DNA bases in gene segments. If this process is done extensively, it is possible to actually sequence the entire genome of an organism, just like they did with humans in 2003. Now the process predominantly uses PCR as we learnt before, but with one major and vital difference. This time, along with free nucleotides, primers and DNA polymerase, special modified DNA bases labelled with coloured fluorescent tags are added to the mix. Each of the four bases ATCG has a modified counterpart and each modified base has a particular coloured tag. For example, G modified bases may be red, C ones may be blue, T ones may be yellow and A ones may be green. The job of these modified bases will be to stop the replication process when they randomly bind to complementary bases. Now to start the process, the DNA is heated as before, which separates the strands. It is then cooled again to allow the primers to bind and the free nucleotides to begin binding from the primers. This process will continue until a modified base randomly binds to the growing strand. When this occurs, the process stops. The DNA is then heated again to separate the strands and the process starts again. Each time the process runs, modified bases will randomly bind to the growing strand and produce DNA fragments of different lengths. Once enough fragments are made, the process stops and the fragments are removed. They are then placed in an electrophoresis machine and separated into sizes, in the same way we just learnt for profiling. A computer can scan the fragments and detect the coloured modified bases. And because the fragments are separated into sizes, the computer will detect the bases in order from smallest fragment, which would be at the start of the gene, all the way to the largest. This allows scientists to sequence the gene and record the order of bases.
Thanks again for tuning in and check back soon for more concept videos.